Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to talk about the different uh, varieties of Swahili uh, I'm planning to learn. As you all know I started with um, I started here with standard Swahili or Sanifu um, so this is basically yeah this is the standard variety of Swahili that's pretty much understood everywhere you go um, you know in Tanzania Kenya Uganda DR Congo Rwanda Burundi and um, northern Mozambique um, so yeah so that's that's gonna be the main variety I'm gonna focus on um, partly just for that reason that it's you know the most widespread um, however I will be um, focusing on two uh, uh, varieties um, so the first variety and, and basically they're both on the opposite ends of the Swahili um, uh, yeah area so um, so I have here Kisangani Swahili which is on the westernmost fringe of the Swahili speaking area and I have Comorian, which is on the easternmost fringe. Although Comorian, uh, well, I'll get to that later. I'll start with Kisangani Swahili. So this is an interesting variety spoken in um, the city of Kisangani, which I believe is the third largest city in the DRC. And, and generally it's spoken in uh, Chopo province. Um, so it's right in the heart of the Congo Basin. On the Congo River, um, so this is an interesting variety uh, in a lot of ways. Um, it's more divergent than other um, um, Congolese um, Swahili varieties, um, with the exception of maybe Ituri Swahili, which is pretty divergent too. Um, but basically, this uh, the thing that sets Kisangani apart is it has more uh, Lingala influence um, because it's right at the it's spoken right at, in an area where basically you know where it borders uh, ling the Lingala lingua franca which would be this region so this is kind of the area where they converge a bit um, and so so is that yeah as a result um, um, Swahili, the colloquial Swahili spoken here is influenced uh, from Lingala. Um, so basically, I, I, oh yeah, and and just to set it apart, um, you know, uh, in comparison, like uh, Kivu Swahili spoken in this region is closer to um, Tanzanian Swahili. Or standard Swahili, even. Uh, but you know, Kivu Swahili has its own flavor as well. Uh, you know, colloquial f flavor. But Kisangani is definitely closer to uh, has more of a Lingala influence. So, so okay, what does it mean to have a Lingala influence? Well, apart from a few words, um, and to be clear, there are a lot of there are some similarities already inherently between. Um, standard Swahili and Lingala like Nani, Wapi for who and what etc. Um, some basic words like that um, are shared between the two languages and um, you know obviously they're both Bantu languages so they share a lot of um, a lot of uh, cognates um, but yeah so but at any rate one difference is Lingala is um, it's more restricted phon phonologically than Swahili, so it doesn't it doesn't have um, it doesn't have the uh, a lot of well for one it doesn't have a glottal fricative like a huh sound um, and also the um, the voiced alveolar stop and voiced velar stop they only occur in loan words. And when they're not in loan, like, but in, in native Lingala words, 
they're on they're on, they only can uh, um, they only appear uh, pre nasalized right like so you have ngai which means me and lingala is a good example of that um, so yeah it's it's uh, it's less phonologically robust doesn't have as many phonemes as Swahili so that's uh, reflected in Kisangani Swahili as well where um, you know the voiced um, velar stop is yeah it basically the you know it follows that same rule where the voiced alveolar and velar stops are only prenasalized um, and um, and a lot of devoicing of uh, consonants as well happens in um, uh, Kisangani Swahili. Um, this is, here's some here's an example. Uh, this is from uh, the the Swahili speech of Kisangani. Um, so you have some examples of the differences. So this is standard Swahili, and this is. Kisangani Swahili. You know, you have uh, Watoto is Batoto. So, and another one is um, like if you want to say this person in standard Swahili, it's Mtuhuyu. But in um, Kisangani Swahili, it would be Mutu Uyu or Mutu Oyo, which is essentially the same as Lingala. Um, or these people would be in standard Swahili, it's Watuwale. In um, Kisangani Swahili, it's Batubale, which is also basically the same as Lingala, uh, those, that phrase as well. So, um, so yeah, you have a lot of the, um, um, so this, so like the just sound becomes a, a palatal approximate. Uh, so Jani comes Yani. That's very common um, sound shift. Um, we find that in Lingala as well, of course. Um, we find another example. So yeah, here's a good one. Kidege comes Kandeke. Um, you know, because like I said, the Avalar voice stop is only prenasalized, and the um, you know the velar stop is becomes unvoiced. So this is kind of a good example of some of the sound changes. Siku, masiko. Um, yeah, there's no R's in, um, or there might be a few. I'm not sure, but definitely there, in Lingala there. There's no R's, so I, I, I assume for Kisangani Swahili, the R's all become L's. So yeah, um, you know the. The, uh, the noun class for um, plural animate, like basically humans, um, is wa, becomes ba in Kisangani Swahili, just like um, as it does in Lingala. Um, So yeah, you all get the picture, um, more or less. So that's basically the situation with Kisangani Swahili. Um, it's still, I'd still say it's it's mutually intelligible. Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, with the um, the pronominal um, the pronominals are kind of uh, simplified here. Like ni turns into me because in isolation in Swahili it's mimi me, me anyway, so they just instead of having a separate uh, uh, prefixed version, they just you know they just kind of copy the one in isolation mimi. Me, me. um, 
Okay, hold on. This is just another example here. Yeah, also uh, Atawapatia comes Atanupatia. The new is basically just is another um, form of the uh, second person plural pronominal in Swahili. But when it's infix like this in, in a verb phrase, it turns into wa in standard Swahili. But as you can see in Kisangani Swahili, it's just simplified. So basically it just has the new form in, in all cases. Um, you know, when it's um, suffix or infix. So that's another um, uh, difference. <clears throat> but yeah, overall, I'd say they're definitely still mutually... In I'd say Kisangani Swahili is still mutually intelligible with um, standard Swahili. Um, I don't know. I don't know what, what percentage I give it. Maybe uh, maybe seventy percent. So kind of on the kind of on the border between uh, right between like what you know you can consider a different language and a dialect of the same language. So yeah, I would say it's like it has like seventy percent mutual intelligibility with um, standard Swahili. But the thing is, um, speakers of Kisangani Swahili, it's kind of it's kind of a one way uh, thing because speakers of Kisangani Swahili are more likely to understand standard Swahili than speakers of standard Swahili are more able are 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 able to understand Kisangani Swahili, just because you know standard Swahili is um, you know it's a standard form, so a lot of uh, people in Kisangani also know it. For that reason, um, whereas Kisangani Swahili is just a colloquial variety, so um, you know it's it's pretty much only limited to this region in uh, Chopo Province. Um, yeah, so it's an interesting case. It's kind of similar to like a lot of Arabic varieties in the relationship to uh, modern standard Arabic. Uh, you know, as far as the in, in the mutual intelligibility. Um, Let's see, but yeah, in, but yeah, definitely Kivu Swahili, um, colloquial Kivu Swahili is definitely more intelligible. It's more mutually intelligible with um, standard Swahili than Kisangani Swahili is to standard Swahili. So yeah, so that's the western fringe of the Swahili speaking area. Um, and then the other variety I'm going to learn is... Actually, it's not really a separate language, or I'm sorry, it's not really a dialect of Swahili. It's 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 its own separate language for all intents and purposes. So this is Comorian. Um, so Comorian is spoken, you know, in the Comoros Islands, which include the present day, you know, island nation of Comoros and Mayotte, which now is uh, belongs to France. Or it's a French, a French colony. Um, so, so yeah, um, Comorian is definitely its own language. Although it's a, it's a Sabaki language, like Swahili, so it's closely related. Um, so, so yeah, so Comorian is kind of interesting because because while it while it is a Sabaki language, it does have some influence from Makwa. Over here in uh, Mozambique, which Makwa isn't even a uh, part of northeastern Bantu. Um, I believe it's it's uh, it's like southeastern Bantu, if I'm not mistaken. So it's so it's not even within a larger group that uh, Sabaki comes, you know, is is part of. Um, but yeah, there does seem to be some influence from Makwa on Comorian. Um, I guess it's, which it's not that uh, far fetched being right off the coast um, but yeah it's definitely Comorian is definitely you know closer to uh, Swahili um, but as far as mutual intelligibility it, it depends so first let's get into the, the dialects of Comorian um, you know I guess some people make an argument that there are um, different languages but I wouldn't say that um, I mean yeah, I don't think so, but um, it's definitely a uh, uh, you know a continuum situation, 
right? So you can divide Comorian dialects into three groups. You have uh, Shingazija, which is in um, the Grand Comor, the, the bigger island. Uh, let me get a little closer. Um, and then you have Shimwali and uh, what I'll call Eastern Comorian, which includes uh, Shimaure and Shinzwani. So basically, Shimwali is kind of an intermediate dialect between Shingazija and, um, um, you know, the Eastern group. Uh, so, but actually, Shimwali is more has more in common with the Eastern group than it does with uh, Shingazija. Um, so as far as mutual intelligibility is concerned, um, I would say, so, so between the two groups, um, so let's just count uh, Shimwali in this group as well and call it Comorian proper. Um, so between Comorian proper here and Shingazija, the mutual intelligibility might, is probably somewhere between 70 to 80 percent. Um, probably more like 80 percent, um, f you know, for Shimwali and Shingazija. Um, as far as, uh, so yeah, so actually Shingazija has, is more, is closer to uh, Swahili. Um, I think they have like maybe 60 to 70 percent mutual intelligibility between each other. Um, and uh, whereas um, like Comorian proper or East Comorian only have maybe 50 to 60 percent mutual intelligibility with um, with um, Swahili spoken on the continent. Um, and uh, what else? So yeah, basically between the Comorian dialects, the mutual intelligibility is like 70 to 80 percent. So that falls pretty much within the range of the same language. It's just this is like Shingazija is definitely the most divergent, probably because in, it's more influenced uh, by Swahili. Um, and also um, Comorian is spoken in parts of Madagascar and uh, Reunion. So the variety of Comorian I'm going to learn is um, Eastern one, Shinzwani and Shimaure. On the um, Inzwani and uh, Maure Islands respectively, um, I think their Francicized names are uh, Anjuan and Mayotte. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I guess the reason that I'm focusing on this these, this dialect is that I think it might be the biggest. I'm not sure, but it definitely has the most material, uh, uh, without a doubt, uh, for for these two dialects, which are essentially the same dialect. I think they're like between um, Shinzwani and Shimaori, it's like 90%. They're like 90% mutually intelligible. Um, so yeah, they're also spoken in... Um, um, parts of Madagascar and Réunion. <clears throat> so, so yeah, I, I'm gonna focus on this one because, um, mostly because, yeah, the material is just, just more there. Um, very interesting phonology when you can compare to Swahili, because you know where, on the on the on the one hand, where Kisangani Swahili is more limited phonologically because of the Lingala influence. Comorian has is more uh, has a more robust phonology than even standard Swahili. Um, so you have this interesting contrast between the bilabial voice fricative and the labial dental voice fricative. So it's like a va and a va. Um, and you have implosives like the ba and da. You have the uh, you have a contrast between um, yeah you have the tsa and um, the za as well, and they're also pre-nasalized. Then you also have uh, retroflex ones, uh, so ta and, and da. And I think they're, 
I mean, they can be optionally trilled, so like tra and dra, which um, I still I'm still working on that sound. It's it's in some of my other languages. Um, so uh, yeah, it also has a ja, which you don't find in standard Swahili. Um, so yeah, pretty interesting um, phonology. Um, then just to give you uh, some examples of um, like comparing it to standard Swahili. Um, like for example, if you want to say, if you wanted to say, uh, like in standard Swahili, say like one of the greetings is habari zako, like, like what are you, what's your news literally? You know, it's kind of like how are you? In um, Comorian, you know, particularly the eastern dialect of uh, Shinzwani and Shimari, you would say habari zaho. Um, or if you want to ask the na your someone's name, you would say, and that was standard Swahili, you would say, um, Gina Lako Nani. Uh, but in uh, Comorian, you would say, Zina Laho Mbani. Zina Laho Mbani. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty different. Um, but you could definitely uh, make, you know, you can uh, definitely... Um, see the, the shared cognates there. Um, let's see what else. So in so Nini in standard Swahili, that's what becomes Trini or Trini. Um, let's see. To give another example. Oh yeah, so the word for person, like in standard Swahili, is mtu, and in Comorian will be mutu or mutru, and people watu would be watu or watru. And I think some. I think I even seen as muntu and watu. So. So yeah, um, and also I, I should mention that, Comor apart from having some influence from Makwa. Comorian also has uh, some influence from Malagasy, which is an Austronesian language. Um, I don't know to what extent, but there definitely is an influence because the Comorian Islands, um, it's an interesting mix of people. So you have Bantus, obviously, um, but then you also have um, Arabs from the, particularly from like Yemen and Oman. And then you have uh, Malagasy peoples who are, you know, who are Bantu, who are like a, uh, a mix between Bantus and uh, Malays, you know, from Southeastern Asia. So you have an interesting mix here of peoples in the in these islands. And um, and actually, Mayote is the only place where both the Bantu language and an Austronesian languages are spoken natively. Because you do have uh, Comorian speakers in Madagascar, but they're mostly from you know, uh, more recent migrations. Whereas, you know, Bantus came here earlier than the Austronesians. So, but yeah, some Austronesians came here into these islands as well. And one of the one of the Malagasy dialects um, is still spoken in Mayote called Shibushi. Although Shimare is still the, you know, major, or I should say um, Comorian is still the, the main uh, language of Mayote. In the form of Shimare. So she, most uh, Shibushi speakers also speak um, Shimare. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if I don't know, I'm probably leaving something out, but I, I guess you all get the general picture. Um, I'll have uh, more in-depth um, videos on these particular varieties in the future. Um, but yeah, so essentially, um, you know, I'm learning st the standard Swahili, which I started uh, in, what, 2019. Um, and I'm also learning these two varieties. Well, to be fair, I'm cheating here because Comorian is a separate language, just to be clear. Um, but, um, but yeah, I put it all under the Swahili. Um, yeah, like I said, I know it's kind of cheating, but they're at least kind of similar. Like, no, they're at least like 50% the same are you know mutually intelligible um so i don't i don't do this often but uh for some 
limited cases, I'll cheat like that and put a you know a closely related language under one under another language. Uh, in this, like I did here. So, but yeah. So yeah, standard Swahili, Kisangani Swahili, and um, Comorian. 